about protein? What do we know specifically about the makeup of this macronutrient that would lead to causing more cancer? Animal-based protein, I guess I should be specific with. Well, that was the question we had. I didn't know. <laughs> and we were just simply saying if it really worked, did work that way. And we did, in fact, repeat uh, some studies that had been done in, in India at the time, also with experimental animals showing that more protein meant more cancer, liver cancer in this case. And so we repeated that. We duplicated it and got the same results. And so as I went forward and started gaining confidence, that was really true. The animal protein effect is quite substantial. In fact, very substantial. Then I had a chance to get into questions concerning what is it about the protein, like you just asked. Mm -hmm. Like, what do we um, know and, now? Yeah, we sort of know more now, but uh, the nature of the animal protein compared to the plant protein uh, really had to do with the kind of amino acids present in animal foods as opposed, I mean, in animal protein as opposed to, let's say, plant protein. Present, long, present over or over-present? Like, are, is it that there's, you said, the, are there some amino acids that are not in plant foods that are in, in uh, meats that are damaging, or is it just that there's too many in meat? Well, it, just, it really has to do with quantity. And we require about 8 to 10 amino acids. We have to consume them, if you will. And the ratio of one to another makes a difference. Mm. It turns out the, the ratio, the composition of animal foods, is such that the amino acid arrangement, if you will, is close to what we have. Not surprising, we're animals. Mm -hmm. And so, in contrast, plant proteins, they have some uh, amino acids that are lower, limiting, as we say. And uh, I can tell you about some of those amino acids. I mean, in animal proteins, they tend to have more of these sulfur amino acids, uh -huh, which yeah. has, you know, that's one thing, methionine, cysteine, if you want some names. When we consume these sulfur amino acids, Given that they have sulfur in them, then when that sulfur is excreted, if you will, uh, converted, it's converted into an acidic ion, and that creates more acid in the body. Mm. That's one little little observation that distinguishes between animal and plant proteins. Plant proteins don't they they don't they're deficient in the in those amino acids. Ah, okay. So that's, when we uh, say uh, a high, but, that, but that's only one explanation, by the way. It's just one. There, could there are be many, many other reasons. Yeah, there's some other reasons too. Anything that you'd like to share that you feel we, our audience would benefit from and th that isn't too in the weeds scientifically? <laughs> well, let, me, let me change We got a pretty question. sharp so audience. That's for me, Dr. Campbell, because <laughs> I'm afraid I won't understand. <laughs> well, let me, let me change your question a little bit. Not so much in, in terms of how much of each, in, each individual amino acid might be there, but instead, let's make the question... You know, what do, what do proteins do in our body when we get them, when you consume them? You know, what, what happens? What kind of mechanisms is, are created to cause that response? There we see a big difference. Ah, uh, okay. Animal uh, proteins, mm. maybe for sort of, in one sense, a little bit subtle reasons, not big differences in amino acid content, but nonetheless they have profound differences in terms of, let's say, elevating blood cholesterol. Uh, mm. Animal proteins increase blood cholesterol. Mm. That in turn is associated with heart disease. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. remember in your course you talked about how everyone calls meat a high quality protein, and it is a high quality protein, but we don't want to have a high quality protein in our diet. So that, that term is mis can bias people towards meat mm -hmm. when actually it's, you know, sort of like having high quality, what, meth? <laughs> you don't really want it. Yeah, can, can can you explain that? That's because obviously the word quality in our society is you know synonymous with good, and something that you that you want to go after. So why don't we want that kind of let's if it's it it shouldn't be called high quality then if it's if it's not right. for humans. I mean it's high quality for I guess lions. I don't know, but um, what? Yeah, could you explain that? Yeah, it sounds like you took our course. Yes, yes, yes. We both did. We both did. <laughs> Let's, let's go beyond that because I'm writing another book that's just about done, mm -hmm. sort of dealing with that question in more depth. Uh, the whole idea that uh, animal protein is higher quality is uh, other than the perception that it must be good. Uh, in a scientific sense, it has to do with measuring how much of the amino acids consumed from the protein actually is retained in the body to do all these good things. 
And by that, I mean grow, grow the body faster, create more hormones and stuff like that. So it turns out animal proteins have the ratio of amino acids in the right proportion. It, a higher percentage of it is absorbed in our body. Therefore, animal proteins could generate faster rate of growth better than plant proteins. And they call that, if you can see my thing, they call that high quality. Yeah, air quotes. Yeah, air quotes, yeah. Yeah, and Got just it. because, okay. uh, quite frankly, um, it, it, the, the animal in that case was retaining more nitrogen. Mm-hmm. That, but, but the point is, later, in, years, in subsequent years, it turned out that uh, why would we want to retain more, more amino acids? Because they grow cells faster? Yeah, okay, it might worthwhile during growth, although not the best. It grows cancer cells faster, too. Right. So right. we found out that... That got left out. That's yeah. never been part of the equation. So that's the question that, that I had. I do remember in your book, uh, quite specifically, the animals that you were testing on, um, that the more protein you fed them, um, the cells were turned on and growing at a faster rate, and then the less protein you noticed... Actually, that, just animal uh, protein. Right, yeah, animal, animal protein. Right, right, yeah, right, right. They're feeding them. Sure. What What were you feeding them? I guess is a great question. Um, and then, but I, I, I mean, that's that was the, obviously the most profound part of that study, or I thought it was. I mean, it was just so fascinating that it could happen that fast. That it could even happen. That it could happen that quickly, turning on and off their cell cancer rate growth. Um, can, can you? Share with our audience, maybe who hasn't read your book, that that conclusion, what you were feeding them, and what was happening with the cancer cells with the sure. more animal protein versus less. Yeah, there's a lot of points there to be made. A lot of a lot of conclusions we drew. First off, the protein we were using, by the way, was the main protein of cow's milk. So Casein? it might come up from the farm, and that's a challenge. Right. So that's a really high quality protein. Uh, first <laughs> off, secondly, more. More of it's retained, and then uh, you know among the things it does is it changes all these mechanisms, you know, in always in a way to promote more growth, more cancer growth, if you will. We could turn on cancer growth by feeding animal protein. We could turn it off by switching to plant protein or decreasing the consumption of animal protein. That whole concept of turning cancer on and off by nutritional means—that's mm. the deal. Mm. That was a big deal. Mm-hmm. It is a big deal. And even today, that is, uh, that, that's like pouring gasoline on the fire, you know, as far as the cancer industry is concerned, because mm-hmm. the cancer industry uh, tend to assume, and they do, that cancer is a genetic disease, and it's only going to progressively get worse. And in that, under the circumstances, what they're, what they're trying to do is to invent a chemical to block that cancer growth, to kill the cells. Mm-hmm. That's what trying. That's chemotherapy, right? Or therapy. They're trying to develop things to kill those cancer cells because they don't see the opportunity of reversing the cancer. That's what we showed 30 years ago, 35 years ago. We could reverse the cancer and do it really quickly by simply just changing the nutrition. In this case, change the level of protein or the kind of protein. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.